I'd like to introduce my uh, co-chair, Professor Andreas Schaefer from Hanover, who will introduce our first speaker. Thank you very much. And um, without any further delay, we are calling up for the first talk. It will be given by Carsten Tripper from Berlin about ventricular unloading and mitigating inflammation and promoting recovery in myocarditis. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation. Let's start immediately due to the time. Um, I got the task to speak about some experience of our clinic with respect to myocarditis and unloading, as you well known, the different forms of myocarditis in our clinic and those with acute fulminant myocarditis, according to a giant cell myocarditis, or even lymphocytic myocarditis, as you can see here, is really associated with a bad and worse prognosis. Very often these patients need support, circulatory support, and this is an interesting um, registry here, just was published, showing that with patients who need circulatory, a short-term mechan mechanical circulatory support, very often in the European clinical um, routine are treated or supported why, by ECMO. And the question is here, why and where we have to put the impeller, where impeller is very well used in all the other cardiac shock situations. With respect to um, informations and surging and PubMed, there are about 10 to 12 different case reports a showing experience with impellers. One of the first were here 2010th with kids that was clear that probably an ECMO approach was not that what everybody has been um, wished. There was a 5-0 pump used already and during the shock situation we're having a recovery after five days. We have several experience also with um, older patients with adults. Every time the same impeller was used and it was a very often a very early recovery situation here it costs a little bit more time. It was also combined with ECMO as a form of an ECMILA. On the other hand, yes, we have also used and data for patients with giant cell myocarditis where at least a bridge for um, Alvet uh, impeller was a, an extremely important tool. Recently, very important in this condition, we've seen that the impeller used in a kid 30 years old, 13 years old, BMI of about 40, um, had been used in transaxillary um, approach, a uh, chance for recovery because the patient had a myocarditis and they wanted that the patient, this young kid, was able to do exercising, to lose weight, to be able to come to the transplant list under these conditions. So during different myocarditis approaches, the most experience we have in the clear cardiogenic shock situation, here's an example where a long-acting impeller has been used in severe heart failure due to viral myocarditis for bridge to um, transplant. So. Our question was, <clears throat> is this really only in circulatory support or is unloading and specific treatment option in myocarditis and in pro-inflammatory clinical situation, which probably in addition helps for bridge to recovery by modifying um, disease modifying effects. And this could be the case since even in heart failure with myocarditis, we know that different effects, reactivation of renin angiotensin system, inflammatory processes, pro-inflammatory and fibrotic processes and mechanical stress can be triggered altogether by mechanoreceptors, the so-called integrins. We know that even in myocarditis here, experimental data, integrins are activated, but integrins are not only mechanoreceptors fighting against severe loading by triggering and changing, as you can see here, the extracellular matrix, different integrins are also able to force further inflammatory responses and have also direct influences on the contractile apparatus. So loading can further impair the status of fulminant myocarditis. And the question is whether unloading is, a, is sufficient to overcome these pathophysiological mechanisms. 
And we have tested that in a patient who came to us, you see here in February on this year, he came from another hospital, uh, had a severe myocarditis, the biopsies has been taken by this hospital, and the patient did not recover despite an immune suppressive therapy. Therefore, he came to our center. We got asked to improve the situation. He was in a pre shock by intubation and in device um, support. We have done the following. The patient got an axillary 5.0 impeller. He was just for two days on bed, and the third day he was already mobilized under these conditions because we thought this is a situation where we have a high chance for recovery, and we didn't want to have the patient in bed. We didn't want to have any catecholamine support. And you see here on this side is still the ejection fraction just with steroids. This five days later with steroids plus the impeller, we have the first improvements. We saw over the time, and I take this here as an important information, we had this impeller and the patient for altogether 40 days, 40 days. BNP values are reducing over the time. Ejection fraction, but probably more important, as you can see here, strain improved over the time. And every time when we <clears throat> did our series echoes, we wanted to know how um, we have here first signs for recovery. And there we do here full support under these conditions with P7, heart cutting out with four liters. And as you can see here, if you do an uh, impeller of P1, suddenly ejection friction started to rise. So loading suddenly was a trigger that improvement of the ejection friction could be detected here. And this is not something what you can expect everywhere. You see here on the other side, there was a patient with a myocardial infarction. We had ECMELA here on board, ECMO and IMPELA. And you see that here when you have reduced the, <clears throat> the um, support of the pump, you have not an additional improvement of the ejection fraction. After 40 days, we were a little bit shocked. You can see that here we had a large thrombus despite anticoagulation, something what we have to discuss and to improve over the time. However, since this was a myocarditis, we were ethically allowed in this situation to take biopsies and also to have analyzing with respect of uh, gene profilings and to see what is really here going on on the basic research part. As you can see here, the T1 is the time point where impeller was um, implemented until T2, you see that the inflammatory response was reduced with impeller and immune suppression. And then in T3, when the impeller was out, inflammatory response started to recover despite steroids. Similarly, you see that here for the adhesion molecules. So every time when the pump was in the heart for unloading, you have this improvement. The pump goes out, the improvement started despite immunosuppressive therapy, not any more so to be not any more so effective. Even the integrin receptors, really the heart sees by measuring the expression of integrins, whether you have an unloading, and when you take the unloading away, the integrin expression rises up. Altogether, we were able to do a mass spectroscopy in the biopsies. You see that here, these are protein analyzings in the disease situation. These are the complete protein pattern in, in the patient when you have an unloading. So a really complete shift from one side to the other side. Okay, we were not able to measure all these um, proteins, at, but we have identified those who had really the largest change. And these were collagen and vimentin. These are matrix protein um, molecules which are extremely important for integrin function under these conditions. And every time you see the same unloading improve these conditions. And as I told you that we have an improvement of ejection fraction into greens directly or indirectly also interact with cardiac function, you see that titine function really improved very fast over the time, and we got this result also until the end. Last but not least, <clears throat> We have not measured oxygen uh, consumption, but we have measured energy 
and um, glucose uptake and also mitochondrial function. And as you can see here, especially mitochondrial function during the bump was clearly improved and when the bump, the loading was left, uh, we have an impairment under these conditions. So I come to my last slide. I think even if this is just a single case um, we have here, with respect to that, what is really going on uh, when, um, in the molecular biases, basis during fulminant myocarditis, we can see here that we have not even a um, circulatory support, but we have an additional disease modifying effect important for bridging of recovery in patients with fulminant cardiomyopathitis. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting um, presentation of a case and uh, the effects that go beyond uh, just unloading. Um, do you have any ideas or concepts of testing this more regularly? You are a very big center for myocarditis. Yeah, we have, we have now uh, four patients under these conditions. They're still ongoing. This is the first patient which has been finalized, and we have, with respect of the chance of recovery, seen in all these patients the same, the same results. Further my, um, biopsy analyzing uh, will, will ongoing. But <clears throat> for me, I think it's extremely important uh, that probably not only pre-cardiogenic shock patients with severe um, myocarditis could use or could be treated by impeller, but probably it could be also in more stable patients on, and when we are able to ha um, handle and safe implantation for a longer time to overcome uh, the disease because here you really have a high chance for recovery. It's something different than if you speak about an Alvet patient where the point of no return has already reached. And therefore, I believe this is a really a very important concept for that kind of patients. Dr. Kapoor. Yeah, so I just want to congratulate you on a really phenomenal study. Uh, this is uh, certainly beyond just a case report. I think it's uh, probably the first study that penetrates into the ability of getting actual biopsy samples on impella support in a patient, uh, which is really phenomenal. So congratulations. I had two questions for you. One is related to the pharmacologic therapy uh, concomitant with the treatment of myocarditis and the use of the pump. So one is just tell us a little bit about the use of drug therapy, steroids during that time period when they, how they relate to your mass spec findings in the temporal sequence. And then the second question was, it struck me as you were you know, discussing uh, the findings, whether or not there could be a circulating marker or a biomarker that indicates unloading. So we've talked a little bit earlier about hemodynamic indices, and I think that's where people focus because we don't have tissue. Uh, we do have circulating samples we can get, but can you tell us a little bit about whether or not you think there's a, a, a signature in the data you're seeing that suggests better unloading? Was there a weaning protocol, et cetera? That would be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, very important question. So with respect to the weaning protocol, I think this is absolutely necessary. We have shown you that we use this so-called pump stop uh, procedure just to see whether when you are by the P1 um, level of the impeller, cardiac function starts under these conditions to improve. So whether the heart answered with an improvement of ejection fraction after or during um, loading. I think this could be a very important um, weaning protocol over the time. Um, we are using especially here the strain. I think strain is extremely important in myocarditis. When you have your still edemia inside, the tissue echo could be extremely helpful to see whether you are still on the, on the right way for recovering. With respect to biomarkers, yes, that we are loving to do too. We have also um, aortic and coronary blood taken, and we were um, looking for whether there are signatures for biomarkers useful under these conditions. So echo, echo strain, I think this is something what can be used already to see whether the patient is in the right direction for, for recovery. And then the final question was just about the use of steroids and Yes, under these conditions. Um, in, my, in, my, in my clinic, we believe that myocarditis, when a severe virus persistent is excluded, need an immunosuppressive therapy. Therefore, we combined Impella with steroids. However, I found it extremely important to see that the pump was more effective 
um, with respect to reduce the inflammatory response than just the immunosuppressive therapy. Something, when I start to think about that, we will see what's going on here. 